Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. I am blessed to bring you this message this week. Stress, stress, stress fills up so many people's lives. My goodness, it just seems these days like we're all going a thousand miles an hour and never getting a chance to stop or rest or, or, or take any kind of a break or just get some, some sort of easing in our mind or our spirit. And that's not what God wants. It's not how he wants us to live. So I want you to really listen into this message. I believe it will be a beautiful revelation in a, a beautiful place of peace. I, 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 my prayer for the sermon is that when people listen to it, they would just feel the peace of God, that the Holy Spirit would touch your heart. So listen in today to live stress-free by his spirit. I've got two opening scriptures for you today. The first is out of the book of John, chapter 14. And uh, I got up here, oh, two minutes early, so I, I got two extra minutes today. Amen? Who give me two extra minutes? Raise your hand. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. All right. All right. It says this. It says, but the Helper, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. All oh, this is going to be special. Peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled nor let it be fearful. There's going to be some real special revelation in this message, so you're going to want to just, just, just tune in. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Who's weary and weighed down? Huh? Anybody? And, and it says, And I will give you... Rest. What does it say? And I will give you rest. rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You know, we live in a very frantic pace right now. Uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, uh, literally, it I feels like just a few weeks ago, we were wishing each other Happy New Year. And, 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 and wasn't it just a few weeks ago? Yeah, yeah, a few weeks ago. And, and, and next thing you know, I'm at the store the other night, and I'm buying pumpkins. And, and, and uh, that, that's why I complained about taking down the Christmas decorations, because I know it will be so fast not to put them back up. Amen? Our beautiful friend Kathy, we were at her home one day talking about this very thing, and she said, come with me to another room in my house. And we go to another room in her house, and there's a Christmas tree decorated in the middle of the summer. And she said, I leave this up all year. She had the right idea. Amen? I keep telling my association that. I just like to celebrate Christmas all year. And they keep finding me. So it won't, be long that, it won't be long that I'll be in the attic and I'll be bringing out the Christmas tree and setting up the nativity and all the, uh, we, got a little, we got a little Christmas village and Santa with a broken arm. And you know, Elise, Elise and I, we joke every year about Santa with one arm. You know, and I, I, I'm always Santa. I say, Elise, guess what I want for Christmas? An arm. That's our joke every year. But it, 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 I mean, it, it feels like time is accelerating, yes? Yeah, do you feel that way? We are living in a more prosperous time than anybody in history the world has ever lived in, and yet with it comes this frantic pace that, is, that causes stress, and stress makes so many people sick. And Harvard released a study that found one billion people on the planet, uh, one billion are suffering from stress and anxiety. I think it's really two billion, but the other billion will feel more stressed out if anybody knows that they're stressed out. Amen? <laughs> and, and I people in the church tell me all the time, Pastor, I'm so stressed all the time, all the time text me, I'm stressed, I'm stressed, and, and you, would, you, would, you would look at them from the outside, you, were, you would think that they are the most unstressed people you've ever met in your whole life. In fact, other people tell me of them, I wish I was more unstressed like them, I wish I was calmer like them, I wish I had more faith like them, but friends, God, God never meant for you to live in stress. God wants you to be carefree, and, and yet the devil will always come to you and say, how can you be so carefree? It's irresponsible. The devil says that, did you know that? The devil tells you you're irresponsible for not, for not worrying. The devil has given us the idea that when, that when you are worried about someone or something, you care about them. When you're worried, it means that you care, yes? You're showing concern. Oh, you're not worried about that? Then you must not care. You're not losing sleep over your kids? Then you must not care. You're not stressed out over your marriage? and you must not care. When, when actually one of the biggest, one of the most powerful things you can do towards, toward, toward the, towards the Lord is to let go of everything to Him. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah, to, to just let it go. I, I once heard about a husband and wife. You probably heard this. I heard about a husband and wife. They were so upset with each other. They had a big argument that they refused to speak to one another. That night, not wanting to be the first one to break the silence. Who's ever been in that position? I'm not going to be the first one to talk. Come on. Bunch of liars. Come on. Bunch of liars. And finally, the man didn't want to break the silence, so he left a note on the wife's side of the bed that said, wake me up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Next morning, by the time the husband woke up, it was already 8 o'clock, furious. He, he roared, where is she? And, and he was about to chew out his wife when he found a note on the side of the bed that said, at 6 o'clock, wake up. <laughs> Thank you. 
you know, I can joke about that, yes? Every day we have opportunities to get upset, to be offended. Life happens. People get on your nerves, unexpected bills, the family members in the hospital. I want to talk to you today about living stress-free by God's Spirit. Because if you're going to live a stress-free life, if you're going to live in peace, it's not going to happen by accident. If you wait for all of your circumstances to calm down, and then I'm going to have peace, then I'm going to stop worrying. You'll be waiting your whole life, yeah? God never promised that he would keep us from difficulty. He never said that we wouldn't have storms. But he did say that because of Jesus in our heart, because of the Holy Spirit in our life, he did say that he would give us peace in the midst of our storms. Amen? Who needs some peace in the midst of your storms? Philippians, and here's that scripture. It says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Come to God with it. In the peace, in the peace, in the peace of God. In the peace. Watch this. It says, bring your requests and all those things to God. And, and it doesn't say that he's going to fix it. He says he's going to give you his peace. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. All right? We skip over that part. It doesn't say, God doesn't say, and then I'll fix it. No, he says, well, let me give you some peace right now. When trials come, our first response is usually the wrong one. Anybody else? We get anxious, and that's normal because it's human. Remember, Jesus was fully human, yeah? When Jesus was praying for us in the garden, the Bible tells us that he sweated blood. The very thought of becoming sin at the cross. And we can't understand the stress from becoming sin because we've lived with sin all of our lives. But for Jesus, he was sinless, and the very thought of becoming sin on the cross, and he's not even there yet, it's a thought. Are you with me? It's a thought. It caused him. He had the thought of the, bearing the sin on the cross, and it caused him to sweat blood. And, and there's, there's an actual medical condition. Some of you in ministry know about this. It's, it, I'll never say it right. <laughs> Hematidrosis, I think they say it. Is that right? Does that, say, that sound right? Yeah, Renee's laughing at me. It's completely wrong, but it's, it's when it, it's, it, it's hematidrosis. It's when your body's under extreme stress or emotional stress and your capillaries burst and your blood is mingled with your sweat so if you think Jesus has never been stressed out like you've been stressed out unless you've sweated blood he sweated blood over the thought of the cross and the shame oh my friends how much Jesus loves us amen today we are forgiven of our sins because Jesus took our place on the cross and on the cross, Jesus received what we deserved so, so that we could receive what he deserved. Amen. He deserved grace, he deserved mercy, he deserved deliverance, but he took our death and we received the grace and the forgiveness. Did you get that? Let me put it up there in case you want to take a picture. Jesus received what we deserved and we received what he deserved. Look, it's easy to get focused on our problems, our goals, our family, our marriage, so much that we're going to have stress about it until we see everything that we are praying about or hoping for come to fruition. And in our stress, we put God in a box. And we tell God what we want, when we want it, how to do it, and who to use. Anybody? I'm not talking about speaking in faith. I'm talking about speaking by stress. Who speaks by stress sometimes? But the Bible tells this. God says in Isaiah 55, 8, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares God. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts higher than, than, than your thoughts. His ways are better than our ways. His, his thoughts are higher than our, 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 his ways of doing things are higher. And if you're only at peace, if it happens your way, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Huh? But if you're setting yourself up for if it happens his way, God will never let you down. See, friends, God, God can see the big picture for our lives. He knows what's around every curve. He can see the detours, the dead ends, the shortcuts, the things we cannot see. Now, now a better approach is to say, God, this is what your word says, and this is what I'm believing for, but I don't want it my way. I want it your way, God. I trust you. Stress really comes from you and I feeling out of control. This is why so many people have stress issues. They can't sleep at night. Their food won't digest. They got ulcers. It's because their mind is never at rest. They're constantly trying to figure everything out and worried about their health and worried about the family, worried about the job. And it wasn't supposed to be like this. Why? Because God is never out of control. You know what's amazing? Do you know the very first thing Jesus wants to give you and I? He said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, right? All, stre all you stressed out people, he says, come to me. And what's he say? What's the first thing he says? And I will give you all. Oh, isn't that beautiful? 
Rest is from the Greek word anapao, and it means right in the midst of whatever you're facing, God will give refresh, refreshing to your soul. Right in the middle of your storm, right when your soul feels spent, when your spirit feels it can't go another step, the Spirit of God will rise up in you and it'll say, peace, be still, soul be refreshed, go back to a state of relaxation, go back to a place of trust. The Holy Spirit will reset your soul. Amen? Who needs your soul to be back to a place before you had stress and worries in your life? When you re release control and, and you rest in God's control, you're showing God by your actions that you trust Him. Jesus said, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit, the Helper. And what does a Helper do? They help you. And sometimes they help you by showing you something about you that you don't like. Yes? But He will show you the answer to that as well. The Holy Spirit is not just out to talk about your problem. He's out to show you the answer. Church, don't ignore it when the Holy Spirit tells you something He wants you to do. He's not out to condemn you. He's not out to just talk about your problem. He's out to show you what to do. He is there to teach you and remind you of everything Jesus said. I'll be honest, because I'm human. I'm human. Dude, who knows I'm human? And there, there are still times I will get stressed. It'll start to come on me. This week we were, we were at the hospital with Saint, they were doing some tests, and we had the, the meanest, most ignorant, most unprofessional, most unacceptable doctor that I person I've ever probably dealt with in my entire life. Inappropriate speaking, un unbelievable stuff. And, and 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 I felt it start to rise up. And Ashley knew it was rising up. Without my glasses on, I'm just staring at the floor. But well, she's talking over here, blah 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 blah. And I'm just staring at the floor. You know? So, you know? And I looked out, I'm turning green. I'm starting to turn green. And my clothes are starting to shred. And I wish, I wish, really. I wish. And I looked down and, and right in that moment, right in that moment, God said, what are you speaking about Sunday? <sighs> Lord, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Right? Hear you, and uh, so I sat there, put a smile on, looked up. Thank you so much. We're all done. So much. Ashley said, "Oh, I want." I said, "No, no." I said, "Ashley, we're all done. Thank you so much. You said you're going to refer us. We'll go ahead and take that referral. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Adios. Arrivederci. Sayonara. I get stressed at times. You know, but you know what happens? Suddenly the Holy Spirit will remind me of something Jesus said. He will. And that word from Jesus comes against my stress. Did you hear that? The word from Jesus comes against my stress and comes against my word. It's a beautiful thing. Thank God for the Holy Spirit memory. Amen? Some of you are discouraged. You're sad. And then all of a sudden you remember a verse. All of a sudden you remember something you heard Pastor Rowdy say on Sunday. Something from the Bible. And it's not that you just remember. It was the Holy Spirit bringing that verse to your remembrance. Rescuing, rescuing you from stress, fear, anxiety. Amen? Rescuing you. Even when you're sitting in church, I have people tell me all the time, pa Pastor, they say, Pastor Rowdy, that sermon was exactly my life. I needed to hear exactly what you said. But it's not my word. I'm not the author. It's the Holy Spirit. Yeah? This is why I tell people, I'm not a revelator. I'm a reminder. All I do is remind you what Jesus said. That's all I do. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. All I do is remind you what the Word of God says, and Jesus is the Word of God. When you are stressed, when you're going through something, the Holy Spirit is right there in you, trying to remind you of what Jesus said to do in this situation. And if you'll stop and listen, He's trying to give you the answer, and all you have to do is stop, and stop trying to figure it out, stop trying to control things, and get yourself into the rest of Jesus, and then you will be at a place where you can hear you can listen to what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you to do. Because in the Scripture, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit. I'm going to show you something. Here's, here's a really special thing. I'm going to show it to you again because I want you to see it yourself. I think some of you might go, oh, wow. John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to you remembrance all that I said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Okay, we got that. Keep that up for me. Jesus says He's leaving us peace. So Jesus, get this now, Jesus is leaving the earth, okay? And like a man about to leave the earth, all right, he bequeaths his estate, his mansion, his house, his, his Lamborghini to you, yes? When I pass, 
you know, right here, Cody gets my Lamborghini. And I'm kidding. I, I never drive anything other than a Porsche. But anyway, um, I have Porsche. I tell everybody I have Porsche taste in a Pinto pocketbook. Who remembers the Pinto? Who remembers the Pinto station way? In, in, the, in the same way, in, in the same way, if you didn't touch a little bit of toe in the 70s, I don't know if you'll understand most of what I say because the 70s it was a defining time of life. In, in, the same, in the same way, our Lord Jesus, listen, of all the things, of all the things Jesus could bequeath to us, he bequeathed peace. Of all the things that Jesus had, and my goodness, we can't even begin to count the riches of his grace, yet in the multitudinous riches of his grace, innumerable mercies of our God, the one thing Jesus said he bequeathed to us is peace. I'm leaving. Behold, I give you my peace. Why do you think the devil wants you so stressed out? Because he knows that if he can take this peace from you, it will be so easy to take everything else. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Greek word for peace is irene. Irene, put that up. Irene is the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so, because I'm assured of that, I fear nothing from God and I'm content with my earthly lot, whatever sort that is. It's used of those who assured of salvation tranquilly await the return of Christ and the transformation of all things which will accompany that event. Now watch, this is a peace the world cannot give you. He says the peace he leaves with us is not the peace the world gives. It's not according to what is happening in your life because life changes all the time. No, it's a peace that the Holy Spirit gives you that comes from knowing Jesus lives in your heart, that God is in control, that everything works together for good, and that, and that it said, in the transformation of all things which shall accompany the event. So, and that all these things are temp trials are temporary. Amen? Amen? It's all temporary. Turn to somebody and say, it's all temporary. The things of this world cannot give you permanent peace because everything in the world is, is temporary. Your situation is temporary. But Jesus is permanent. Jesus is forever. And this is how much Jesus loves you. Watch this. That he didn't just come to give you one-time peace and then he's back to heaven. You know? No. He lives in our hearts and he gives us the Holy Spirit to fill our lives and our hearts and our minds. The Holy Spirit lives in us. What does that look like? Well, I'm in a stressful situation. Somebody hurts me. I got so many commitments in front of me. I got payments to make. I got deadlines coming up. And so I call out to the Holy Spirit inside of me. And I say, Holy Spirit, I need you to rise up with your peace inside of me. I needed that many times this week. Holy Spirit, I need you to help me with this. I need you to help me not let this ruin my day. Amen? Listen, listen. Nobody was more busy than Jesus. You read the Gospels, you find Jesus very busy. I work 190 hours a week. Jesus was far more busy than I am, right? He, nobody, nobody was ever, but nobody was ever more restful than Jesus. Nobody was ever more at peace than Jesus. He accomplished in three years what it would take people their whole lifetime. Yeah? He, you know why? Because he moved in rhythm with the, with the Holy Spirit. What, one time... Watch this. One time Jesus was so tired, he slept in the boat. The devil raised up a storm. The disciples lost their minds. They yelled at Jesus. They woke him up. Don't you care? And Jesus just stands up, calms the storm, stops the wind. He was, then, he, what he was doing in that boat is he was on his way to deliver the most demon-possessed person in the entire Bible. That's why the devil tried to stop him. So he's crossing the Sea of Galilee for one man. You, get, you listening to this? Who, the man who was crying night and day, cutting himself, crying night and day. And, 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 and Jesus heard that cry, and he went across the, to see him. Jesus was on, when Jesus goes to see him, because he didn't get to sleep in the boat, he's on no sleep. Who, who operates really great on no sleep? Who's just a bowl of sunshine when you got no sleep, right? But he goes over, and he sees the man, and he casts the demons out with one word. Go! And all the demons left. Jesus goes back, watch this, he goes back to the boat. The moment the boat touches down in Capernaum, the ruler of the synagogue comes running. He says, my daughter is dying. His name was Jairus. He says, please come to my house really quickly. And Jesus says, I will come and heal. And as he's making a way, a woman reaches out and touches the his garment and is healed. And Jesus stops and he turns around long enough to talk, have a conversation with the woman. And I'm sure Jairus was saying, hey, what is happening? Woman, my daughter is dying. You're healed. Get out of the way. Yeah. Hey, when your child is sick, you're desperate, right? Yeah? So I said to the lady in the doctor's office, in so many words, when I said, thank you so much, I was saying, get out of the way, right? And, and, as, and as Jesus is talking to the woman, someone comes from the house and says, don't bother the master, your daughter is dead. And as soon as Jesus heard it, Jesus says, don't be afraid, only believe, and we shall go, she, she should be well. This is, the, this is the same thing that we have to do when life starts to get stressful. 
don't be afraid, only believe, and your situation will be well. Jesus went to the house, we know the story, he raised the girl from the dead, watch, all in one day. Why doesn't the Bible list everything that Jesus did? Because, oh, oh, how did he do it? He moved in rhythm with the Holy Spirit. Pastor, you haven't seen the stress and the troubles that I go through. Amen? No, I haven't. But Jesus has. And he has given you his Holy Spirit so that you can get in rhythm with him. One of my favorite Bible people is Elijah. You're going to love this story. God used him to do many great miracles. On one occasion, Elijah called on God and God sent fire down from heaven. Get that. He called out to God and God sent fire from heaven. Big move. Elijah's enemy Jezebel found out and threatened to kill him. You would think Elijah would have said, oh yeah, go ahead, make my day, right? Right? I just called down fire from heaven. What are you going to do? I'm going to call it down, right? But, but that's not what happened. The Bible says when he heard the news, it says in 1 Kings 19, it says Elijah arose and ran for his life. Why did Elijah run for his life? I'll tell you why. Because he got stressed by what he saw. He forgot about the mighty power of God. He began to walk by sight. This, that happens to us. When, when we open the mail, when we turn on the news, when we listen to politics, suddenly we hear the, suddenly we hear, uh, and, and then right in between the news, the Southwest Airlines commercial comes on and says, what's it say? Want to get away? Yeah? <laughs> Why do you think that's such a, a, a successful tagline? Because life gets so stressful, many times people just want to get away, want to run away. In fact, I looked up online about kids running away, and I, I'm going to read this to you because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's cute and sad, these notes. Uh, the time you read the, by the time you read this, I might be uh, I uh, might be leaving. You want me you uh, you want to see me again? I will be at the first McDonald's that you see when you go right from our house. I love you. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> go to the next one. Hopefully these will fit on the on the screen. Mom, I ran away because you're mean. Not not because you're mean or anything. I only wanted to meet the Spice Girls. Anyway, I wrote that actually when I was ten. So so. Uh, <laughs> Okay, go to the next one, go to the next one. Yeah, dear mom and dad, I ran away. I'll be back soon. Love, Joey. It's all mom's fault. Amen. Look at him running. Look at him running there, yeah? And this one from Emily. I'm going, uh, I'm going to run away tomorrow at 930 uh, when you and dad are steeping. They're making tea, obviously. Be sure to say, be sure to say goodbye forever. <laughs> Emily, Emily, P.S., I will be back. <laughs> Got a little Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Here's mom. I'm going to run away because you're being mean to me. If you want to know where I am, I'm at Phillips, I don't know, or Co-op or McDonald's. See you never again in my life. Yeah? Go to the next one. We got another one? And then this one. Mother and dad, do not call the FBI or police. I will be back uh, at Wednesday. The reason why I've done this is because you are mean. Amen, Sam. Yeah? Go to the next one. I think we got another one. Here we go. I'm running away from home. Don't call Mrs. Mandel or the police. Goodbye. And I mean it for a short time. Don't bother looking for me for a short time. <laughs> Love from your ex-son. Next time, yeah, that's right. Go to the next one. Let's see the next one. Oh, this is this girl had been thinking. I well, I think I might have to run away. So it said, "Dear diary," she crossed it out. You can't see the top. It says, "Dear mom." I think I might have to run away sometime and get a new life and other stuff. And I think I will have enough money and get a job. I'll, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna. Ha I have to go, but I'm having a rough. I'm sad. I have to go, but I'm having a rough day at school and other times. I'm gonna have to go on Saturday. Please help me pack and get a new mom. <laughs> If they don't want me, take me to the orphanage. I love you and I'll miss you. Sincerely, Isabel. Two moms, right? Well, that girl's hurting, hurting. You got another one? No, that's it. All right, all right, all right. So look, look. Isabel tells Elijah, I'm going to kill you. And, and, and Elijah says, Elijah writes out a runaway note. I'm running away. He ran for his life. Elijah forgot the God who, all, the God who always took care of him. He forgot about the... The God who sent birds to feed him. He forgot about the God who, the, the, the widow, he commanded to feed him. He forgot about the barrel of meal that never ran out in a jar of oil. He forgot about the God of the resurrection who, who, who gave him the power to raise a boy from the dead through him. Why? Because in just one, one moment, any of us can lose sight of our good God. Even if we walked in the greatest faith yesterday, we can go back to our eyes today, yeah? The Bible says that when we forget how good God has been to us, stress. But it says in Psalm 11, 6, 116, Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. Elijah forgot it all. He ran to the wilderness, he sat under a tree, and, and, and he prayed. Listen to this. He sat under a tree, and he prayed that he might die. This is how messed up he was. This is how messed up he was. He's running from death, and he asked God to kill him. <laughs> Come on. You know why? 
Some of you know what he's talking about. You've dealt with that before. You're running from every, everything in hell and life, and you're like, God, just kill me. You're running from stuff you're worried will kill you, and you say, God, kill me, right? You know why? Because he wanted to control the situation. If I'm going to die, at least I'm going to do it my way. He became depressed, suicidal. Maybe you're dealing with discouragement, stress. Maybe you feel you failed as a husband, as a mom, as a minister. Maybe you feel disappointed with God. Maybe you feel your best years are behind you. I'm speaking to you. God's speaking to you. I want to show you what God did for Elijah to lift him out of his stress. The Bible tells it as, as Elijah lay and slept under the tree, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. There by his head was a loaf of bread and a jar of water. He ate, but he laid down again. Angel woke him up again and said, look, eat. The journey is too great for you. Eat again. All of us, this journey, this life, it's too great for us. It's too hard for us to do it alone and do it successfully. We need God's spirit to empower us. Elijah ate what God sent. He got up, strengthened. He, and he, then he traveled on that one meal. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights to reach the mountain of God. There's so much in the story. Because maybe you're here today and you look at everything that you're facing in life and all you can say is the journey is too great. I want you to know God knows how you feel. And he loves you and he cares for you both immediately and practically. Never doubt that. God cares for you, pardon me, intimately and practically. This is why God, immediately also, this is why God had put his, has put his Holy Spirit in us. In the natural, your journey may be too great, but you have God's Spirit in you that can strengthen you and sustain you. Friends, God will not forsake you in your day of stress. In fact, look at this, God seeks us out to strengthen us during our time of discouragement and stress. Th that's what he's doing right now when I'm speaking to you. He's speaking to your heart. Peace be still. I, I had a funeral on Friday. I'm out in the cemetery. I'm, out, I'm, out, I'm on the way on the west side. I'm in El Mirage. And uh, I, I, I'm out in the cemetery. I had a lot on my mind, especially because of this doctor. I'm replaying this doctor. I'm, I'm still thinking about the mean doctor, right, right, right? And, uh, I, and I'm stressed about everything. Saint's feeling terrible. He's out of school again. And so I got this funeral. I'm out in the cemetery. I rode out in the hearse. And uh, when it was over, the funeral director says, hey, you want to you wanna ride back with me? I said, no. I'm, I said, I'm just going to walk back. Sometimes I just, right? Sometimes, I, and it wasn't that far. I mean, it was back to my car. It was across the cemetery. Don't worry, I'm not going to walk home from El Mirage. You know, you know? I, that's real stress. I'm just walking off. I'll see what I see. Right? So I, I, I had a lot of my mind. I'm thinking about the schedule, my son, my commitments, my sermon, right? And I'm walking along. I'm walking along. And I'm, I, and I'm very careful. I'm always careful about where, I, where I'm going to step. I always tell the family, don't step there. Don't go in that door. Okay, right? And, but I'm walking along. And all of a sudden, I realized the ground I was walking on was was pretty rough. What in the world? You know, I'm in my suit and dress shoes. And I looked down and I found out why the guy offered me a ride back. And, and, and they were putting in the winter lawn and the ground was covered with huge chunks of manure. Oh, no. And suddenly that's all I could smell. <laughs> you know? Right? Without even trying to, I had walked right into the middle of a bunch of crap. Yeah. Yeah. But doesn't that sound like life? Ah, uh, doesn't that sound like life? I stopped, I looked around. There was nowhere to walk where it wasn't crappy. Isn't that life sometimes? Yeah, yeah. Now, I could have I gone back, yeah. I still would have had to go back through the crap. I could have stayed right where I was, right in the middle of the crap. But guess what? No matter which way I went, it was going to be a crappy trip. So really, the only logical thing for me to do was to just keep going. So I said, oh well, and I kept going. Yay. Yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of manure. Amen? That went through my mind. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of manure. Friends, when, listen to this. This is a big spiritual truth. When you suddenly find yourself in a crappy situation, don't give up. Don't go backwards. Don't retreat. That's what the devil wants you to do. But instead, you've got to trust in God, keep your peace, and just keep going. Don't complain about it. Just keep going. And eventually, you'll get to the other side. And what that means is, don't let the crap around you steal the peace inside of you. Post that. We saw this at one church, Scottsdale. Don't go there. They're very godless place. Yeah, Amen. That's why they won't ever put me on Christian television. Amen. So... So when you release control to God, listen, when you release control to God, it takes the pressure off your life. Here you go, God. 
Life gets so much more freeing. You're not always fighting, trying to make your plans work out. Sometimes we're so focused on what we want that it's out of balance. Listen, listen. Anything you have to have in order to feel at peace. Thank you, God. Anything that you have to have in order to feel more at peace, the devil can use against you. If you think, I have to have this promotion, I have to have this right in my family, my spouse has to change, i got to be married to be happy, i got to have good weather. No, the mature attitude says, even if it doesn't work out my way, even if my plans don't happen, God, I'm still going to enjoy my life knowing that you're on the throne. God's Holy Spirit wants to keep you at peace on the inside. When, when Ashley and I got married, we had a big outdoor reception, all planned, ready to set up. We had a thousand people come to the wedding. A storm came. We never even got to have the reception, never even got to eat our cake. I took her guard off in the church hallway, amen? And it could have it been stressful. We could have let it ruin everything. But instead, we realized the most important thing wasn't the reception. It was the two of us got married. We're going to spend our lives together serving God. Yeah, amen? Turn to somebody right now and say the 11th commandment. Thou shalt not get stressed. Say that right now. Thou shalt not get stressed. Hey, a lady in our church this week, lady in our church, she said, oh, you can tell me. Well, this week she dealt with a difficult coworker at her job. The lady was nasty to her, inconsiderate, rude, disrespectful. The lady yelled at her, at a church member. And this church member realized she had a choice. Do I give it right back to her? Yeah. Yeah? Or do I keep my peace and let God take care of it? Do I let the spirit of offense rise up? or the Spirit of God. Well, she chose correctly. She said a part of her was angry, but she chose peace. That's the Spirit of God. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Later, she chose peace. Responding. So later, this lady comes, comes out of a class and, 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 and uh, comes to our church member, and she says, you know, I'm mean to a lot of people. And they always respond back with anger. But you didn't. She said back, she said, well, I was angry, but I'm not allowed to express it. Lady apologized. But then for the week, that lady, every time she walked past our church member, she glared at her. <laughs> finally, finally, she came in one day, walked up to our church member, and she says, what's your granddaughter's name? She told her. She pulled something out of her purse. She said, I made something for her. She had taken these little socks and crocheted all this beautiful frill and beads around. Much to her surprise, our, 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 our church member, Michelle, ran around the counter and hugged her. Yes. The lady went, what? You know? See, this is what happens when you release control to the Spirit of God in you. God will make things happen that you could never make happen. Release the worries, release the stress, release the frustration. You don't have to live worried and frustrated. If you trust God and give the Holy Spirit control of your life, God will make all things right. Now watch this. I'm, I'm, I'm almost to the end here, so get your shoes on. Jesus said, <laughs> watch this. Jesus said, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. Not the world's peace, but my peace. It's not outside. It's inside. It's the Spirit of God in you. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, stressed out under pressure, and I'll give you rest. We all, we live all day with, with a stress meter. You and I do. It's one to ten. Yeah? For most people, the average every day is probably around four, four, five, four, five, four, five, right? But as things happen, it, it goes up and down, and up and down, four, seven, four, eight, four, seven. The boss was mean, four, nine. Somebody cut you off, four, eight. Your spouse said something you didn't like, four, 25, right? And, but this is not what God wants for you and I. Mm -hmm. He loves you too much for you to have to live on this, this, uh, this roller coaster. Isaiah 35 says this. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. Only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. In quietness and confidence is your strength. But you would have none of it, he says. God offers this to us, but we have to want it. We have to take hold of it. In quietness and confidence is your strength, not in loudness and insecurity and feeling attacked. No, that's not your strength, that's weakness. Quietness and confidence are your strength. We're never going to be perfect. Maybe we'll always be around zero to four, zero to six, but we need to find our peace in releasing things to the Holy Spirit. Of all the blessings Jesus wanted to give, he says, come to me and I'll give you rest. Make the trade-off. Make the trade-off. And the world desperately needs rest. Your soul desperately needs rest. The devil says, do this now, decide this now, control this now. <laughs> no, it's a restlessness about the world. But the Spirit of God moves in peace, in quietness and confidence. I, I used to have the shortest temper on earth. I went from four to 125,000 in a split second. I thought, yeah, amen. I thought I was in control. I was out of control. I had to learn to release that to Jesus and let the Spirit of God respond to situations instead of my flesh. I don't want to be rowdy control. I want to be spirit control. 
It changed my whole life. I found more strength in quietness and confidence than I had ever had, the opposite. And God wants all of us to have the same. Isaiah 26, 3 says, you will, keep, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust you. We have to quit letting our minds run wild, run to fear, run to worry, run to anxiety. No, keep your mind steadfast, trusting in God. It says that God will keep you in perfect peace. Hebrew word is shalom. Shalom is not just peace. It means welfare, health, provision, peace. Watch this. It's everything you need. It's Jesus providing for everything. You, do you see this? Leave that up for, for a minute. When Jesus rose from the dead, his first words to his disciples were, Shalom Aleichem. Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem. Which means peace. Shalom, uh, shalom be, is peace. And then Shalom Aleichem is peace be upon you. Now watch this. He, he appears to his disciples and he says, Shalom Aleichem. And then he shows them his hands. Watch this. Revelation. He said, peace be upon you, and he shows him his hands. He was saying, here's the payment. Everything's paid for. I have paid for everything in your life. Shalom, alaikum. I have paid for your sins, your, well, your welfare, your health, your provision, and, and your what? And your peace. Shalom. When Jesus said, shalom, alaikum, he says to us, be at peace because everything in your life is taken care of. Wow. Woo! Peace, say peace right now. Peace, 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 peace. Friends, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in Jesus, who has paid for the peace of your soul, the peace of your mind, the peace of your heart, and he's put his Holy Spirit inside of you to give you peace in your spirit. Wow. And all you got to do is start to move in rhythm with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, when I look back over my life, most of the things I worried about never came to pass. I wasted a lot of time and energy being uptight. It's easy to wake up in the middle of the night and find something to worry about. In fact, there were times I'd wake up at night and I'd think there must be something. <laughs> yeah? And I'd, I'd think about it until I found something to worry about. Anybody else? A lot of, a lot of people these days, they're pre professional worriers. They can multitask and worry. They can take a shower and worry. Brush your teeth, worry. Drive to work, worry. When I turned 50, somebody asked me, they said, if I could do anything over again, what would I do differently? You know what I said? I said I would trust God more. I wouldn't lose sleep worrying about ministry, worried about finances, worried about the church, worried if people would like me, worried if I'd be able to minister, worried if I could put together a sermon. None of that worrying helped me to move one inch forward. I wonder how many things that you're worried about that are never going to come to pass right now. Next time you're tempted to be frustrated, offended, stressed out, remind yourself, look at this, remind yourself, you can't control what is going to happen to you in life, but you can control how you're going to respond to it. Are you going to move in rhythm of the world or are you going to move in rhythm with the Holy Spirit? Don't keep letting the same things upset you year after year. The same people get on your nerves. No, every day is a gift from God. Once this day is over, we can't get it back. Your time is too valuable to waste. Upset in traffic, offended at a neighbor, frustrated at a child, worried about your health, discouraged about your dream. You can't control those things. So let the Holy Spirit take over and stop allowing yourself to be upset. Sophie, my daughter in Australia. We, we talked you know, talk to her and she speaks Australian now. <laughs> Sunglasses are now sunnies. Oh, I got to get my sunnies. McDonald's is now Maccas. And she tells us all the time, very convincingly, McDonald's is much healthier here. Dad, much healthier. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But now she's, you know, now when she says about everything, now she says, no worries. No worries. Yeah. They say, you know, they say it all the time in Australia. You, you say thank you and they say, no worries. They're relaxed. I don't think they mean it the same necessarily as us, but nothing about the buildings on fire. No worries. <laughs> Robbery in progress. No worries. <laughs> Sounds crazy, but it reminds you not to worry. And as Christians, we have the Holy Spirit inside, and that should be our motto too. No worries. Traffic backed up. No worries. God is directing my steps. I'm going to be at the right place at the right time. Somebody's rude to me. No worries. They're having a bad day. I've already decided to have a good day. Business a little slow. No worries. God is my provider. He's supplying all my needs. If we get in rhythm with the Holy Spirit, with being at rest, at peace, I wonder how much we'd enjoy life and how much longer we'd live. You know why? Because Proverbs says, a relaxed attitude lengthens your life. Who wants to live just a little bit longer? You can add time to your life, my friends. Turn to somebody and say, thou shalt chill out. Turn it right now. That's the 12th <laughs> commandment. <laughs> Lean on the Holy Spirit. Quit being upset over things you have no control over and you have no right to have any control over. Quit trying to change things you can't change. 
worry less, trust God more. Stress less, laugh more, love more, enjoy life more. Do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be fearful. Philippians 4, 7, last one, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Live stress-free by His Spirit. Amen? Amen. Thank you, God. Woo! Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, Father God, right now we come to you, and I thank you for these amazing, beautiful people. I love them so much, but more importantly, you love them with everything you are. I'm so in love with these people, God. You have amazing purpose for each one of them. You know how I pray for them each week. And not one person here is unimportant or necessary in this world. They all matter deeply, uniquely, significantly. And I know this is why the devil tries to keep each of us stressed out. So we never truly live the blessed, peaceful, confident life that you want each of us to live. So today, God... Some people here are carrying around way too much. And today, they need to let it go. Say that, say that with me. Say, today God, today God, I release my worries to you. I release the offenses. I release the struggles. I cast my cares on you. I don't have to fix the world. Only you can do that. I don't have to make things happen. I don't have to control anything. I don't have to force my dreams to come to pass. Today, God, please take the pressure off of me, and I will take the pressure off myself. You're in control of everything. And today, I want to stop trying to do your job. I release everything in my life that is stressing me out. Whoosh. Today, I choose to trust you. I trust you will get me where I'm supposed to be. And as I trust you, I know I'm going to enjoy life more, and I'll live longer. So today, God, I stand aside. And I trust in your promises to work out your plan for my life. I believe you will open the right doors. You'll bring the right people. You'll turn negative situations around. You will take care of my family. Pray it. My finances, my dreams, my retirement, my mind, everything, my health. And I will step into the fullness of my destiny in Jesus' name. Release everything. Release control. Release the stress. Let it drain out of your body and into Jesus' hands. Life is too short to live that way. Let it go. Give the reins to Jesus. Take over, Lord. From today on, I want to live stress-free by your Spirit. I want to walk in rhythm with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take over in Jesus' name. And today, if you've never believed in Jesus, never trusted in Jesus, pray with me today. Say, Jesus, today I want to believe in you. Today, I want what you have for me. Today, I ask you to forgive me my sins. I repent of all my sins. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your restoration. I receive your blessings and promises. I receive your love and your friendship. I receive your peace. I want to be free from sin. I want to believe in you. I want to trust in you. I want to live for you. So come into my heart forever with your Holy Spirit and take over as Lord of my life. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm gonna sing you a love song, Jesus.